Hello, and welcome to another review. I'm the Welsh King, and I love video games. Now then, let's talk about Crash Bandicoot. I love Crash, you love Crash, or so I hope. I think we all, almost, love Crash. Which is why today, I'm going to talk about one of his not-so-well-known games. Crash Bandicoot 2... Entranced for the Game Boy Advance. So, let's get on with it, shall we? I'm not going to say anything about Crash as such in terms of his origins because I'm guessing if you came to watch this video, you probably already know who Crash is, what he's about, and what his games are mostly like. So, I'm just going to leave that there. Crash Bandicoot 2 Entranced is the second in the trilogy of Crash Bandicoot Game Boy games. Proceeded by Crash Bandicoot The Huge Adventure, or Crash Bandicoot XS for our European friends, and succeeded by the absolutely awful Crash Bandicoot Purple Fusion Ripto's Rampage. So where does this game stand in between the good and the bad? I mean, it must be the ugly, you know? As in, you know, the good, bad and the ugly? Eh? Eh? Oh, why do I even bother trying to waste my humour on you people? So this Crash game was produced during the Universal Interactive Studios era. With a lot of help from their good friends at Vicarious Visions, Crash Bandicoot 2 Entrance was born. And of course, it wasn't part of the Naughty Dog era of Crash Bandicoot. Which wasn't a bad thing, but it wasn't a good thing. Because let's face it, Naughty Dog Crash is the best Crash. Then again, we must be thankful it wasn't the Activision era. Or should I say, the Craptivision era. Yes, Crash Bandicoot, Mind of a Mutant, I'm looking at you. So here we roll the title sequence. And of course, as I said earlier, Universal Interactive Studios and Vicarious Visions. And then we arrive at the title screen, the beautiful simplicity of it all, with too many options to choose from, but we shall pick a new game. So basically, here's the dealio. Uka Uka is sick of Cortex's multiple failures, so for his next master plan, he hires Entropy. You know, that dude from uh, Crash Free, you know? Well, haven't we gotten far for a pair of fuzzy marsupials? I am Dr. Nefarious Trophy. Yeah, well, we've heard it all before. Now move along, I've got explaining to do. So yes, here we have a rare example of a Crash Bandicoot game without Cortex. Now, I know what you're all thinking. What? No Cortex? What blasphemy is this? That's like having bread and butter without the jam. Cortex is the strawberry jam, if you get what I mean. Coming soon! Cortex's strawberry jam. A brand new fun tasting jam for the whole family. Promoting levels of world dominate, I mean intelligence levels by tenfold. Cortex's strawberry jam. For the intelligent at heart. Warning, consumers may suffer from a high shrinkage and may have the tendency to turn into some kind of evil scientist who has 0% common sense whatsoever. Use only as directed. If symptoms persist, see your healthcare professional. Do not use if pregnant, breastfeeding, under the influence of alcohol or narcotics, or if you are a bandicoot. This has been a health message from the Cortex Jam Foundation. But anyway, Entropy's idea is to capture Crash, Coco and Crunch and put them on the bad guy's side. How does he intend to do this? Transport them through time and space and hypnotize them with the help of somebody called Entrance? So yes, this is Entrance. This is the result of what appears to be Dr. Eggman getting in the bedroom and getting freaky with Humpty Dumpty. The result then started getting high on God knows what, thus turned into this a psychopathic looking egg shaped cybernetic hypnotist who looks like he's suffering from dementia. No, it seriously doesn't get any stranger than that, kids. It seriously doesn't. I can seriously imagine the boardroom meeting for this game. Oh, uh, hi guys, my name is Stu, 
and over there that lady is Pid. And today we're going to unveil the brand new Crash Bandicoot game. It's going to be called Crash Bandicoot 2 Entrance. We're fully aware that there's another Crash Bandicoot 2 game, but this one's going to be a million times better. Why? Because one, it's side-scrolling, and two, we got rid of all the bumbling idiot villains and replaced them with Entropy. It doesn't get any better than that. And of course we even added in this weird egg-shaped cybernetic thingamajiggy who's a hypnotist from the fifth dimension. Yeah, it sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? So, uh, yeah, it's going to run smoothly. Uh, do we have any objections here at all? No? I think we all agree it's genius. So now we get this nice little tutorial on Insanity Island. And not that the game knows it, but I've probably played this game enough to know what the controls are, even if I had played it on a PS2 or a PS1. So, really, I don't need your help because I'm not some newbie to Crash Bandicoot, so... I'm just going to continue on. And so Entropy now is in another cutscene, revealing his evil master plans. So he kidnaps Crunch and Coco, and Aku Aku needs our help to find a power crystal so he can look into what's going on. Why Aku Aku can't use his magical shaman powers is beyond me. So that's logical. But yeah, so now we go and grab the power crystal, jump over that nitro crate, grab that gem, and accidentally get pulled into a vortex. So now Aku Aku is trying to pull Crash out of the vortex, whilst Entropy tries to pull him in. But I don't see how that's going to work, because two powers pushing and pulling, it's just going to split, and you get fake crash. Yeah. But yet, fake crash is in warped, right? And that was 1998 on the PS1. So somebody please explain to me how he's been created in Entranced in 2003 on the Game Boy Advance. I mean, that makes about as much sense as trying to go into a taxi office, ask them for a Big Mac and fries and a cup of coke but hold the ice. It makes no sense. Now we're going to save the world from Entropy and we end up in the warp room which looks very nice with all the natural scenery and warp portals. It's like a strawberry and sausage smoothie. You know, have you ever seen one of those things? It's like purple and you put a nice peel of lemon or lime on the end. I mean, trust me, I'm a genius, it's very nice. So anyway, we end up in this cute warp portal room, and now we have the options to go to Saudi Arabia, ancient Egypt, swimming in the ocean with sharks, um, ancient Mayan ruins, later on we can go to space, but now we're just going to have some fun with the boss battle. And apparently it's Evil Crunch, because he's been hypnotised. But he doesn't look that evil. He just looks like he got put into a blue jumpsuit, got a shield, and a jetpack. Oh, whoa, 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 hold the phone, he fires missiles. That's just rewritten everything that I said about him. But, yeah, just make him fly into the nitro crates and he dies. Easy. Now I must question myself. Do I honestly think I'm ready to judge this game after just playing one world of it? Yeah. I think I can safely say I can review it and after doing one world. Let's do it. Like a boss. The storyline in this game's actually pretty good. I mean, a crash game without Cortex. I know most of you'd be sat there thinking that's pretty much a surefire disaster, isn't it? Well, let me tell you, it isn't. I mean, you still have Cortex in this game in cameo, but he's there, he's just being rested, but it's allowing other villains to bloom and shine in their own respective personalities which is fantastic um, another thing I do love is the level design it's not great but it's not bad um, it's nice touching some as I said it's nice touching some levels where Cortex makes small cameos it you know makes you realize hey he's not been totally forgotten about he's just put to rest per se um, but you know I'll admit, on some environments, it does get pretty repetitive. It's just like you have... So go to, in, to ancient Egypt, you know, there's one pyramid, maybe, and it just looks all the same. You could mistake one level, you know, as being the same level as them all. You know, it's just... There is no way to distinguish them from one another. It's literally that hard to do. And at times, that gets extremely annoying. So, 
you know, as much as I love the level design in this game, it's just not up to scratch with the other Crash games where maybe the levels have their own individuality, per se. Um, the character designs are pretty well done, actually, for the Crash game. I mean, basically, the Crash game has got, you know, new models for every single character um, in this game, except for um, Crash and Aku Aku, which does annoy me a little bit, because, I mean, Coco's got her own new character model, um, Crunch has got a character model, because he didn't, I'm not sure if he actually featured in Crash the Huge Adventure, Entropy got a character model, because he wasn't in the previous game, um, Entrance, because he's brand new, but these two don't even get any you know, new character model because it's their character model has just been ripped straight from um, Crash the Huge Adventure, which is annoying to me because it's just lazy. You could have made a new model with just a few touch-ups to Crash and Aku Aku, you know, made them, you know, I don't know, slightly... I, I don't know how what you could do, I guess. But I just think, you know... You know, some people might disagree with me and say, you know, don't mess with perfection and everything. But what I see here is that they were a little bit lazy and they could have made a few touch-ups. I can't say as to what touch-ups they could actually make, but, you know, they just could have done it. Um, and another thing I do love is the music. The, you know, if the music suits the atmosphere perfectly. I mean, if you've gone to um, ancient Egypt... The music, you know, literally will make you feel like you've gone to ancient Egypt in real life. If you've um, gone to the Saudi Arabian levels, you'll feel that too. If you've gone to um, the sea, you know, where you run away from the shark and you get all these music pieces where the shark's coming towards you and you get the... Dun -dun -dun. It's not like Jaws, but it kind of makes you think of... Oh, it's, you know, it sounds a bit like Jaws a little. But... It's just fantastic. Um, the, there's little things like flying carpets, as you can see here, and the Saudi Arabian levels that are just fantastic. And there are other things as well, you know, just with... Like the cutscenes, they're fantastic as well. I mean, instead of having blank stock standard pictures, you've got moving pictures. I mean, it's just beautiful. So in other words, this is going pretty well. But is Crash Bandicoot 2 Entrance a good game? Mm, the answer? Yeah. The best Crash game for a handheld console? Hmm. Definite yes. One of the best Crash games ever? Oh. Maybe it's not the best, but it's up there. It wouldn't surpass the original Crash trio of games from Naughty Dog or CTR. But it's in amongst the list of good games. I mean, if I had to make a top 10 list of Crash Bandicoot games, I think this might just make the cut. So, who knows? So if you are a fan of the fuzzy orange marsupial, you kind of owe it to yourself to at least try the game once. I mean, they're fetching for really cheap prices on eBay right now, so if you want, grab yourself a bargain on eBay, put it in your Game Boy, and get your bandicoot on. I have been the Welsh King with another brand new review, and you have been awesome, and until next time, sayonara! Hello, thank you very much for watching my second YouTube video game review. If you liked, please like and share and comment down below. If you didn't like it, then get out of my face because I don't like you. And yes, and don't forget to do 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 subscribe.